yes, Andy T Sports says Jared Goff would have been good 15 years ago because now you have to be mobile quarterback. Now that game, uh, yeah, yeah, that yeah, being just a pocket passer basically is 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 not good enough. That's what you're saying. Yeah. I agree. You gotta be better than that. Um, I still take him over. I still take him over Kirk Cousins. I still take him over Kirk Cousins. Um, Kirk Cousins has been blessed with all the talent around him since the time he took the field, even in Washington. And you know, listen the 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 greatest blessing that that I mean, if we're being honest, white quarterbacks have. Is not that teams build around them and get them talent and get them prote- protection. The greatest blessing that white quarterbacks have is the lack of expectations, because mm-hmm. Matt Stafford ain't had no expectations for all that time he spent in Detroit. None. Josh Allen apparently doesn't have any expectations now, Look, despite being on one of the better allegedly teams in the league. Credit to Matt Stafford for finally getting it done. I didn't think he was ever going to get it done, right? Credit to Sean, but. Yeah. He was the number one overall pick when he was drafted. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of he had Calvin Johnson, one of the greatest wide receivers of all time, Megatron, mm-hmm. and they couldn't make the playoffs. I think he made the playoffs like what twice, uh, two or three times, and I think they won maybe one playoff game. I can't remember. I have to look. I went back and I looked because the people people like to say that they just never had a good defense, which isn't true. Not uh, true. They they had a they had a couple of good defenses there and they were they were just wasted. When Dominican Sue was there, they had top ten defenses. Yeah, right. A couple times, uh, they had everything that they needed to win. Um, but I mean, you're talking about like 13 years where he didn't win a playoff game. Matt Matt Stafford really he he yeah he had an under 500 record uh, in Detroit for his career. And when he when he went to the Rams, he tried to throw that Super Bowl away. He in tried fact, hard. I gotta look now because I because. He, I said at the time, like even if he went sixteen and zero with the Rams, he would just hit five hundred. Right? I think he's over five hundred now because you know a, a lot of their their really bad stretch he wasn't playing. Ah, I think he's smart. I think he's over five hundred now. Smart. So yeah. I mean, you know, these are the type of things. And, and and does that mean he's a bad quarterback? No, obviously not. He's a good quarterback. But you never once heard in the media uh, anybody saying anything about Matt Stafford, right? right? No, there's no expectation. No. Lamar Jackson. Oh well, he only won one playoff game. Mm-hmm. You know, can he? Can he? Can he? You know, go further in the playoffs? And he's only been playing for five years. You know, like there's absolutely no expectation. When you guys ever hear, man, Kirk Cousins got to get it done. Kirk Cousins made a lot of money in the league. That team got to the NFC Championship game with Case Keenum, and they brought in Kirk Cousins and got worse. And people are like, ah, that's Kirk though. <laughs> yeah i mean there, there's no expectation so that's why we push back on a lot of those narratives because thinking about these guys it's definitely a racial issue jeremy you're right it, it, that's all it is that's all it is you know some of it is subconscious from the fans right you don't think about it you know if, if you're a white fan and and you're watching kurt or matt stafford you can relate more to them you know um but you gotta ask yourself those those questions when people bring it up. Like, hey, how come how come this person doesn't get any any, any flack, right? How come he doesn't get any smoke, right? Why is why is it always about Lamar Jackson? You know, Oscar says the thing about black QBs is that the establishment they don't see them. They want they don't want to see them succeed. I think they just don't believe in them. It's 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 ingrained in the culture, right? And when you have certain practices and you have this is what happens when you have um, jobs passed on to children, family members, you know, what I'm saying close friends, that mindset, it's hard to get rid of because it's passed on. Right. Yeah. I'll tell you, you know, one I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I'm just saying like, like that, you know, like you don't have good hiring practices. So you, yeah. it's, you, you don't hire people that come in with a, with a, you know, with, with, with fresh, uh, uh, a fresh per- perspective on things. Yeah. So even though these younger coaches may not think that they have a problem with, with black quarterbacks, the way they saw their fathers, or uncles, or whoever coached the game, you know, when they get a black quarterback on the team, they feel like this is how they have to coach that that quarterback. They don't really give them a chance to, you know, to to really go out there and, and air it out. 
it, it's very hard to break that mindset. And and you know that's why I've, I've, I've in the past compared it to a person who learns to play an instrument like the piano versus a person who's taught to play a song, right? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, you can sit down and you can play whatever song you're taught to play and not know how to play a piano. And that's what a lot of, goes on with a lot of coaches in the league. They're taught a certain way. Uh, they're, they're taught one scheme. They're taught a certain way of doing things, a certain way of running practices, certain way of treating players, certain way of scouting players. And they can't ever break out of that because that's just all they know. They're, it's not that they're, they're you know, uh, masters of the uh, of of you know football knowledge. You know they right. they don't have all the knowledge. They can't mix and match things. They can't uh, tailor their scheme to the, the talent they have and things like that. It's just they're taught a certain way, um, and you know in in some ways that's okay. Like everybody doesn't have the talent to be able to to be that flexible, right? But right. The, I think it's the majority of coaches in the NFL who are just kind of uh, you know made on a production line essentially. Right. Yeah. That's why they, they make such a big deal about coaching trees. Yeah. Bill Belichick taught you what he does, but you're not Bill Belichick. So you can't do it. Like when you go somewhere else, you can't, you can't actually replicate that. Um, but where I was going with that is I wanted to say that that's not what's going on in green Bay. Jordan love sucks. <laughs> uh, that's, that's the issue with the, with the green Bay Packers. It's Jordan love. <laughs> is very bad at throwing the football and he can't find it. it they have talented receivers. And now granted they're, they are young. Their receivers are young, but he's got Christian Watson. He's got Romeo doves. He's got Jaden Reed. They just drafted Luke Musgrave. Throw, throw him the goddamn ball, bro. Like get it <laughs> near them. They'll probably catch it and they'll make plays. Jordan love is bad. Yeah. Yeah. I can't, I can't defend it right now. He's bad right now. I still have faith in him, but he's, he's, He's letting me down. I ain't got no faith in him. 